So thanks again, everybody, for joining us today uh, for another Road to the 2016 Candy Awards webinar series. Today, we're going to be talking about how candidates are your recruiting customers, or at least they should be. Uh, with me today is Alin Bailey, the Integrated Recruitment Solutions Manager at Intel, uh, which has also been a, a proud Candidate Experience Awards winner in the past as well. Uh, my name is Kevin Grossman. I'm the Vice President of the Talent Board of the North America Program. Before I turn it over to Alin, I want to talk just for a, a minute or two about the Talent Board. We are a nonprofit, nonprofit research organization all about focused on the elevation and promotion of a quality candidate experience. We were founded in 2011. And ever since, we've expanded the mission and really um, have helped to share with the industry insights of what's working in recruiting and what's not, and all about how to improve a candidate experience as it impacts the business. This is last year's landscape uh, in regards to the Candidate Experience Awards, uh, the scope of our program, which is now in EMEA and APAC. We are right now in the throes of completing this year's Candidate Experience Awards, and you can see how the numbers are dramatically different and higher, 400, nearly 400 companies globally participating this year. Again, this is a research program all about what's working and what's not in recruiting and what how candidates perceive their experience applying for jobs at these companies across the board, and they rate these companies, and then the companies with the highest ratings receive awards every year from us in each of these regions, and we are very excited that in a couple of weeks in Austin, Texas, at the Recruiting Trends, and Talent Acquisition Technology Conference will be celebrating our latest North America Awards Gala there on the night of November 15th. Hopefully we'll see some of you there as well. And that is exciting. These are last year's winners. I can't share this year's yet. We haven't announced them publicly, but that's happening very, very, very soon. But you can see some of the, the companies that have participated and have won as of last year. And then lastly, I want to thank all of our generous sponsors. Again, because we're a nonprofit, our program is completely underwritten by the solution providers and other donations from the industry. So we want to thank them as well for supporting our program. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Alin Bailey and welcome Alin. Hi, Kevin. Thank you very much and um, welcome everybody. I'm excited to be here um, talking with you um, today about um, our journey um, here at Intel of starting to understand um, how to manage and think about candidates as if they were customers. Um, so as I start this story, I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, who I am and, and how I got into this process and um, why the idea of thinking about candidates as customers um, was so important to me. Um, so previous to this role um, and working at Intel, I had spent um, 20 so years um, working in the user experience space, um, focused at looking at customer experience design and user experience design um, from a variety of different aspects. And when I was asked to come in and start working in the talent acquisition space, I wasn't quite sure that was, um, it made a lot of sense. What was the point of that? It, there wasn't really um, a user um, in that space to focus on. Um, and as the new leader of that organization sat down to talk to me about it, um, he started to describe the challenge that he was facing. Um, as he would um, go around and talk to business leaders about what was happening in talent acquisition and whether or not his recruiting teams were effectively being able um, to meet the business's needs to get top talent in the door, he was often um, told that there were challenges and things weren't working as well as they should be and they were challenges about getting the right quality and and he questioned well where's the gap what's the problem what are you concerned with what's happening for you and again and again business leaders would use the same phrase they would say we're just not getting the right paper we're not getting the right paper we're not getting enough paper the paper isn't working and it actually took him a little while to figure out what they were talking about because he was in recruiting and there was paper, I guess maybe they were talking about um, the, the requisitions or was he talking about um, the paper that was, you know, part of um, the, the process flow. Um, and then he realized what they were talking about was resumes and that everything had boiled down to thinking of the recruiting process and the hiring process as how we navigate paper, non-dynamic pieces of paper through a recruiting process. And people were no longer really part of our thinking in the space at all. Um, and he 
then chast me and challenged me with saying he believed that the way we were going to be able to change the dynamic, find the right talent for Intel, start meeting the business's needs, was when we were starting to change the paradigm of the recruiting process about processing resumes through the system and instead start talking about people and people who were talent, who were needed within our company to allow us to be successful and to create the products and services that Intel wanted to deliver. Um, so I took that challenge head on and got very excited about it. And what I'm gonna walk you through now is the steps that, that we went through and, and kind of our thinking as we've gone through this. We've been in this process now for a little over three years of systematically starting to change the paradigm in our organization to look at the candidate as customer. And the number one most important thing we did um, was related to the first challenge that our leader put in front of us. And that was start changing the picture from focusing on the process of hiring and around the people. And we did that in a very tangible ways. We took a conscious effort and made sure that every time we shared a piece of data, every time we talked about what was happening in the process, we simultaneously showed images of people, showed quotes from people, um, inserted opportunities to show videos of actual people talking about their experiences. We know we tried to make a quick shift from saying, let's talk about the steps for a behavioral interview and instead started going in and talking about, let's watch a video about what it looks like when a candidate is actually going through an interview and talk about the experience. So step one for us was tangibly switching the dynamic from a process-oriented focus to a people-oriented focus. Step two, which is on the next slide, um, was then saying, once we do that, how do we start to then show cause and effect? That every time you were starting to see challenges occurring within the ecosystem of the hiring process, how could we start to demonstrate where, whether that was either caused or being affected by something that was happening directly to candidates, the people involved in the process. Um, and once we started to do that, we we're able to start breaking down each of these little boxes that were on the Visio chart. And instead of just looking at them as, should we make them round, square, or move them up or down in the diagram, we started to be able to have the conversation about if we move this box or if we change this process or if we do something different, how will it impact these people? And these people are our customers. So cause and effect was very critical. And the next, then we realized that we had to go to the next level of focus. Everybody was willing to believe on a basic human level that thinking about people was important. And as you started to put people in front of them, it became harder and harder for them to ignore that people were involved in the process. That was great. We started to hear less people talking about the paper and the resumes and more people starting to talk about candidates and real experiences candidates were having. Now we needed to connect that idea, that humanization of the process to what it really meant when we didn't deliver good candidate experiences to the bottom line. And the easiest, quickest way to demonstrate impact to the bottom line is to show what was happening when we were losing money because we were having to go back and continue the lead capture process over and over and over again because we were losing people out of our funnel due to the candidate experience that we were generating. So going in and providing real tangible numbers that showed people it cost more to continue to go out and build attraction mechanisms to capture more and more leads than it would cost us to effectively go in and re-examine what we were doing in our candidate experience and through our candidate um, processes, through the recruiting process, um, to keep candidates in that funnel, to nurture them over time, um, and to create experiences for them that were successful and positive and happy. And then the ones that, eat, that didn't find a job with us at least had such a positive experience that they started to become part of the population, helping refer others and bring them back into our funnel. And we connected that experience-based activity directly to the money that we could save in the lead capture and attraction space. So that was all well and good. At this point, we had started to humanize the process. We started to monetize 
the process and say, this is what it's costing you. And here's your opportunity to decrease your cost and increase your impact. Then we wanted to connect this directly, the candidate experience, directly to the biggest challenges that the organization was facing or that we thought we had to deal with. All these disconnected projects that were going on to resolve things like um, the fact that there was a black hole in the process and recruiters were not having trouble trying to understand how to get candidates out of the ATS system. Or we were having troubles with assessment challenges and hiring managers saying that the assessment processes that were underway weren't handling and giving them the right types of candidates. Or other challenges and teams were working on things like quality of hire numbers and were we getting enough A-list um, hires into the process or people that at the end of the day we were considering A-list hires three or six months down the line. Each of these were individual projects that were going under on. And what we wanted to do is take a look at each of them and start to figure out underlying each of those problem statements. What was the connecting thread around all of them that led you to the actual candidate experience? Was the black hole phenomena related to the candidate experience? Was the um, assessment challenges related to what was happening in experience design with quality of hire related and if so how and once we were able to do that we found actually 98% or so of the big problem statements we were dealing with could all be connected to what was happening in the candidate experience and if we could then address those we could start to make major shifts in the quality of service we were providing so now we were moving not just from the space of saying Treating customers like candidates makes good sense from a bottom line. We were now saying treating, um, treating candidates like customers was good process design, and we had come full circle. So then, once we started to do those pieces, we had to figure out how are we going to start addressing all of these things that we had identified um, as opportunities for us to improve our candidate experience. And over the course of the last three years, we've worked on a lot of different elements. We've worked on things like our application process, which are very tactical, very systems oriented. We've also gone in and worked on very soft skills concepts, like what does it feel like as a candidate to go through the interviewing process? And how can we help redesign that experience for candidates and that first um, interview engagement cycle and what that can look like. We've also gone in and taken a look at things like the notifications and the communications that candidates get. Building all of these different elements have given us big impacts. I was telling Kevin right before this phone call started, one of the most exciting things for us is looking at our candy data year over year. When we started this process um, and started participating in the candy process, we did fairly well. I mean, we got uh, okay, you know, results and, and they were fine and we were happy with them. In fact, we were a candy winner um, a few years um, in a row there. Um, but as we started to see these improvements go into place, we started to be able to correlate the actual improvements in our candidate experience numbers. And not only were we starting to see big wins, I told Kevin, just looking at the data that's coming out um, most recently, we're able to see huge jumps and gains. Um, that are directly correlated to the small steps and activities that maybe one off we may not have been able to register results with. So I'll talk to you a little bit about how we manage figuring out which small steps to focus on. Let me go to the next one. So the first place we wanted to focus was to say we can't do everything. In fact, um, the good thing about being part of an engineering organization, if there's one thing we know how to do, it's how to look at a variety of big problem statements and prioritize them and understand how to build a roadmap around them and structure our thinking. So immediately we sat down and said, let's take all these issues, we have to prioritize them and then focus. And prioritization was based on two things, based on what would create the biggest impact from the experience perspective and thus impact how candidates worked through our system, how they experienced our system, and what types of results we would get from the types of hires at the end of the day. And then which items on the roadmap or which items that we needed to deal with um, could be quicker wins, right? How much effort, time, and money would they take to accomplish? And 
could we then layer them on top of each other by focusing on ones that were quicker wins, maybe not as big of impact, but because we could handle five of those in the time it would take us to do one big impact item, could we start to scale that in time? So there was a very deliberate prioritization and focus process um, that happened around identifying the key elements of our candidate experience we wanted to work on. After we did that, um, we started to take action. Now, taking action is great, um, and we were really excited because we started to be able to feel like we were checking things off the box, and we say like, oh, we um, simplified the application process, we moved it by X number of steps, or our mobile apply now looks better, or our immediate candidate survey is coming back telling us that our engagement with recruiters um, has gotten 20% better because recruiters are starting to ask um, what candidates are interested in and not just drill them um, on pre-questionnaire questions. These are all great wins, but we weren't getting huge traction with them in the organization. And not everybody was is part of the process yet and buying into the idea that they needed to treat these candidates as our customers. So what we learned that we had to do was not just track the results that we were seeing, but spend as much time implement, um, talking about the results within the organization and what it meant to the organization as we did implementing the results. So if it took us three or four weeks of design work to go in and redesign um, the mobile application process and then it took us another month or so to put it into place, we needed to think strategically about making sure that we were spending just as much time, two or three months, actively planned going out and talking about what we were doing, what it looked like, what results we were seeing, and engaging people in the excitement of the results as they went forward. Thus enlisting the whole organization in thinking about candidates as customers. Next. So the plus of doing that was, is we found that as we started to go out and talk to the organization about the wins that we were seeing and successes and start to um, celebrate those successes as they were starting to happen, we would start to see new doors open up, new opportunities, opportunities for us to layer in additional solutions that would allow us to amplify what we already had in place. So for example, when we went in um, and started to see great results um, from revamping our application process, um, shortening it, making it more simplified, focusing on the things that were really most important for us to have um, in the kind of ATS version and trying to take some of those elements into more personalized engagement conversations that recruiters were having. We found that we were starting to get really good traction with that. And immediately the business came back to us and said, you know, we've been getting feedback from candidates that the application process is great, but the notification that they get afterwards is a little eh, right? It says that basic standard, thank you for applying, we'll talk to you again someday. Right? Um, and I thought, you know, it, candidates are mentioning that to us. And since you're already in there playing with the application, would you be willing to go in and take a look at the notifications? Well, that was already something that was on our roadmap. But because the business had invited us in to have the conversation and start working those elements, we got in quicker. The door opened. We were able to amplify um, the work we were doing um, on the candidate experience in the application um, and kind of early engagement stage. Um, by looking at the notifications, how they were phrased and how they were structured, um, and really creating a more enhanced experience um, for candidates around applications. Secondarily, soon after that, the request came in to take it a step further and start looking at how we were providing things like status notifications, and et cetera. Again, opportunities by talking about what we were doing and then layering in additional solutions. Next. So all of these things were well and good, but one of the things I mentioned was it was really important for us to figure out how we could get as many people in the organization to consider the idea that candidates were customers um, as just part of our natural DNA. Because we knew that candidates don't just interact with one system, they don't just interact with one person, they don't just interact with one component within our company. They interact in lots of different places. And it's important that we had people on the ground in all these different places who believed as much as we did that candidates were customers and were able to start self-identifying opportunities where they could start making changes to create 
more customer friendly and customer focused experiences. Um, and so we purposely went out and started finding what we called our knights in the organization. People who were excited, intrigued, interested, had influence amongst our peers, um, and were ready to help think about the idea of candidates as our customers. And we started to equip them with information and tools and resources and training to start doing their own design thinking sessions, doing their own work to start evaluating the experiences that their bucket of the recruiting process was having on candidates and empowered them to start making decisions and changes around how they wanted to do their work. Next. So this is, we've so far talked about the idea that we started to think about how do we make the business case, start making the connection for the business that candidates are customers. And then the idea that it's a journey that we were going through and that small steps, small incremental elements really allowed us to be successful in this space and to have big wins. The next piece to us is also very, very important. Um, I mentioned to you when I first started this conversation that I come from the experience design space. And the one thing I know from the consumer experience design space is, is that people are fickle. They change their behaviors all the time and their expectations all the time. And so measuring the impact of your candidate experience all the time at various different levels is critical to identify how your candidate's experience and experience expectations are shifting or changing. What we design today may not necessarily be what candidates want or expect three months from now, and we have to be able to foresee that, understand when things are happening, and shift and alter and pivot our strategies. So we do that in the following key ways. And I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly, um, and you're more than welcome to contact me. We can talk about them some more if you're interested. The first is, think about what you really care about. If all you're measuring are efficiency and process measures, like volume, speed, um, et cetera, then that's what your organization is going to be driven to produce. More volume, quicker, um, um, quicker action on volume, and more speed to hire. So focus on what you really care about. If you really care about what's going on with the experience, how do you develop measures that allow you to do that? Next. The other key piece to this is, you can't just look at the quantitative measures. So you can look at good quantitative data, but just like with the candy serving, one of the reasons it's so powerful for us is because it doesn't just tell us what's happening, right? Because quantitative te data tells you what's happening. It doesn't tell you why. The why comes when you compare the qualitative data, what people say, with what they actually do, which is what you see in the quantitative data. And we understood very quickly that we needed a combination of both to see um, what was happening. So for us, when we look at the candy data, for example, we are just as interested in the survey quantifiable data that people tell us um, about what they're doing, but we're even more interested in the comments below where people start to really talk about why they think something's excellent or not excellent, why they mark it as a two rating versus a five rating. We wanna know why, because the why points to where we can actually start tweaking the system. Next. I mentioned that you wanna make sure that you're measuring the right things. And for us, the right thing was thinking about how we can measure the full recruitment funnel. Because the candidate's on a journey, and the candidate's going in and out of this funnel at all different places. And if we're only measuring what happens at the end of the funnel or at the top of the funnel, like only measuring what comes in by a lease and then what comes out by a hires and looking at it in terms of data on the top and the bottom, we don't have visibility into what people are doing in all the key behavior stages, like when they're deciding to give you more information and move from a lead to a prospect, or when they're deciding to actually move from just being in, thinking about you to actually filling out an application, or when they move from doing that to being somebody who's shortlisted or who's selected. When we start to understand data at all the different points in the funnel, we can understand how what we did and what it cost impacts the actual experience, and we can start to tweak it at the right place and have full visibility. And we do that through that combination of qualitative and quantitative data. Next. 
and then I'll wrap it up really quickly and tell you that um, I mentioned this in a couple of places, um, but as you start to collect all of that data, and as we started to understand competitively what was happening and from a candidate experience to be able to find the places to tweak, to alter it, you have to continue to be able to make the business case for why you want to make the shifts and alterations you want to within the candidate experience. And to do that, you've got to be able to tell a story. You've got to be able to connect the dots with data. Tell the story, have the visuals, make sure they're about people and not just process flows, and connect it with the data that shows what's happening. Explain, engage, and enlighten, and bring your organization along to looking at candidates as your customers. And that's what I had to share with you. I'm hoping it was at least interesting and had some pieces of value for you in the conversation. Excellent. Thank you so much, Alain. Everybody, if you've got any, got any questions for Alain and what she shared today, you can feel free to contact her directly uh, or myself if you have questions about Talent Board and the Candidate Experience Awards and Benchmark Program. Um, real quick, Alain, I just wanted to, to point out a couple of things that, that were takeaways for me that I've been hammering home myself for a, a while now as it comes to candidate experience. Focusing on the people and the candidates as, as the primary customers is, is a, something that many, not only candidate experience winners have done, but many organizations are starting to get that because of the impact on the business. And just the fact that you outlined the incremental steps that you've taken to get there and the, and the long tail impact that's been tremendous that you're going to be sharing soon, which I can't wait. That's very exciting. And then lastly, you know, couldn't agree with you more when it's all about measuring what works. And you've got to be agile. It's, I know those are buzzwords, but it's important. Measuring what works and doubling down on that. And then dumping the stuff that doesn't work. Don't waste any more time or resources. So if it's, if it's helping you to remain competitive in the talent landscape long term, and again, thinking of them as your primary customers, that's huge. So I wanted to thank you again for the presentation. Thank you, Kevin. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks, everybody. For, thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks.